Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp build. So today I thought we'd use something a little different that we haven't used in a while and build around the shipping containers that are available in the game. So let's jump in. Okay, so yeah, I've not used the shipping containers in a little while, so I thought I'd make a fun, scrappy sort of centerpiece for a build. And uh, I thought we'd head back down uh, to an area we were not so long ago, but uh, it's quite a cool spot. So, here we are, just outside of Sutton and Helvetia. That's my little shipping container camp. So this spot is um, reasonably flat, kind of looks like somewhere where you'd pull up to park, really, beside the road. But just near a few of the key locations in the forest, relatively early game area. Good spot. It's a little bit on the popular side, so some competition is uh, perhaps a little bit inevitable if you're going to build a camp here, but uh, it is a good spot nonetheless, and uh, I thought we'd uh, start out here. So, shipping container first and foremost. So this thing is pretty cool. We've got closed versions and open versions. Not entirely sure what you'd use the closed version for, but anyway. One slight drawback to this that immediately kicks in is that the thing is obviously big and flat on the bottom, so... If it's not on pretty much exactly flat ground, then it ends up floating, so... I spent quite a while moving this around, trying to figure out where to put it. But we got there eventually. A nice flat bit of ground. Um, I had thought about building closer to the tree, but in hindsight, this gives me a bit more room to build all around the shipping container and build something quite interesting. So, uh, yeah, worked out quite nicely here. So, sadly, these things don't have doors that we can snap onto the front of them, which is a bit strange. But they are exactly the right size to fit walls onto the front of, so we can basically add our own. So I'm lining up a foundation there. I just want to check exactly how the wall connects to the foundation to make sure I've got this right in my head. I'm using the abandoned mine shafts that are here for that scrappy wooden look. Improvised look. So the wall piece will be on the inside of the foundation, which means I need to nudge this forward a little bit so that the next foundation I'm going to put in, which will snap to this one, and be where the shipping container is, will actually be inside the recessed front of the shipping container. A bit like that. So that when we snap the wall on, it just kind of sits nicely into that recessed front of the shipping container. A little bit of work needed to uh, line that up just right. There we go, not too bad. We're a little bit off centre there, so let's try to shift it a little bit. This isn't a perfect fit, which is kind of fine for the improvised look of the thing, but I do want it to be pretty, pretty central if I can. Minimise those gaps. Just like that. We're a little bit, I think, too far back here, so there's not enough room to actually uh, snap the wall in. We'll the one with the roof here will make it a lot easier to tell which way round it is. So yeah, we'll nudge this back just a little bit further. Trial and error being the thing. Looks about right. Put that in. There we go, put that round. Still a little bit too far over. Let's play with it a bit more and see if we can't get it into the right place. Really pleased that that second foundation just snaps straight through, by the way. That makes life a lot easier. But there we go. Finally got it into the right spot. So, what we're going to do now is lower these down so that the wall is basically a bit more flush with the shipping container, so everything's sort of on a level together. But we're already very, very close to the ground anyway with these foundations, so... Getting this to drop down a tiny bit is fiddly, to say the least. For those who are wondering how to adjust the height of the foundations like this, I do have a guide on the subject. So I have a quick hunt around on the channel, I'm sure you'll find. There we go, that dropped down, now snap to it. Put these back. Now we should be able to get that wall in just where we need it. Come on, there we go. Nice. You can see it's not sticking up or anything now, it looks about right. That roof's a bit ridiculous, so we'll uh, swap the door out. I'm also going to put the door on now, because if you want to take the foundations off, you certainly can do if you're using a door piece here, but um, you need the actual door in the frame first, otherwise you won't be able to snap it in without the foundations in place, so that's why I put the door on there. As it turned out, I ended up leaving the foundations in anyway, so uh, it didn't really matter, but generally in the past I have got caught out by that. So I've put a stair on the front here, so we've got a smooth transition in there, and so that the door doesn't look like it's floating. Except that, um, because the stairs snap low, it's under the ground and the door does look like it's floating. So, in order to fix this little issue, we're going to have to kind of undo everything we've just done, and bump these foundations back up a little bit to put the stairs in, so that they are sitting visibly rather than under the ground and everything looks a bit neater. 
So we'll carefully line this up again because it's been awkward as heck. There we go. If it was a little higher up, this would be easier, but uh, it is what it is. So there we go. Snap those back in. Now we can put the stairs in. That should solve the problem. So let's line these up and make sure we've got something to snap to when we want to drop it back down again. Get that stair in. I'm going to drop this down and put a foundation in on the left because we need that second foundation in order to be able to remove the one that the stairs are connected to. So with that done, everything's at the right place, the right height. We can now put the door and the door frame back. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> nice. Works. And we can move on a little bit. So, I want to build some stuff that's kind of above and over and around the shipping container and kind of build out from it to make the whole thing look like a scrappy kind of improvised shelter. So we're going to use the mine shaft stairs there. And you see, from this height, just below the level of the floor of the shipping container, it actually kind of lines up quite nicely to transition onto the top of the container. Just like that. It used to be ever so slightly down below the uh, level of the floor, but it works. So we're going to put that large floor up there to sort of act as both a floor and a roof. Because we'll have a little bit of crafting space under the stairs here. Get the staircase in. Now I'm going to use these half floors just to put some posts in on the corners. That will allow us to snap them there. Slight error here. I'm going to switch this round. And then re-snap the post so that they're both facing the same way as it'll have to be on the side for this one. There we go. Nice. So I did a few extra bits there that were uh, going to get changed in a moment, so we'll skip over that. Getting the stairs on here is a bit awkward because of the shipping container. The wooden ones won't fit, concrete ones just don't look that good. Or not for this job anyway. So we're going to try the full-size stairs, which normally I don't like the look of, but in this case, it actually kind of works. So that's what we're going to go with. Jumping back up to the top, let's bang a few railings in. I'm going to stick a guard post on the front here, just to make it a bit more interesting. Add to that scrappy ramshackle look. Don't really want it floating, though. So let's uh, drag that back a little bit. Nice. A yeah, little adjustment to get that lined up. Should be about right. Yeah, not quite straight. It's a weird thing with scrappy. Scrappy's good, but sometimes cockeyed is not so great. <laughs> Sit that door back in while I remember. So, moving on, we'll hop back up to the top again, and I'm going to fence off the back of the shipping container here, and I'm going to use the chain link fences, which, uh, yeah, I like these things. It's a bit of an, perhaps an odd choice to use something so tall and such around the outside of this particular shipping container, but it makes for an odd shape and changes up the angles and things, which I really quite like. So the end result works quite nicely. Most of those will snap in just fine. The guard post is getting in the way for this one, so we'll have to place it manually. That works out okay. Nearly there, there we go. As long as we're uh, on this sidebar here as well, the fact it sticks down won't be a problem because it'll be concealed by the edge of the container. So, on the side here, I'm actually going to use this as a crafting space outside the container, and the inside will be the living space. But I thought I'd use the rough patch planters that were from the New World on Tour season just at the end of last year. These things are kind of fun. Um, obviously they're intended as planters, but I thought we'd mix it up and use them uh, for something different. But they had a nice kind of cage around the outside just to uh, add a little bit of variety to the build. So dropping them down just a little bit further here, because they do have a tendency to kind of sit up a little bit, these things. And uh, I don't really want that. They're going to do that anyway, but if I drop them down, then it, the transition will be a bit smoother. However, they also don't like sitting up against things. The edge of these are kind of annoying. The only thing they snap to is each other, not other foundations. So, a bit of trial and error required to get these to sit exactly where I want them. There we go. Now, I'll switch these back over, and we've got an enclosed cage. Cool. So, this is why I didn't show you the initial bit around the outside here, because I'm going to change it. And I'm going to use the Helvetian Lodge sign, and don't actually quite like it there. We're going to move it around the side. But uh, a couple of improvised bits and pieces here instead of fences make that scrappy look come together quite nicely. That looks good. Let's get this out of the way then. The cup and fence does work quite nicely here, but uh, I wanted to go a bit different. I do like this Helvetian Lodge sign, although even though it's not actually floating here, it does kind of look like it is, which is a bit unfortunate, but I concealed that in the decoration. 
which will be coming up soon. God love the gas station sign. That's great for things like this, so drop that in as well. And we'll head around the back. So we need a few bits out here. Get some uh, bathroom facilities put in. I've also got the generator in the corner there, which is entirely decorative, because I'm not actually using power for this, the windmill one, but it, it looks quite cool and adds a little bit of extra dimension to the back corner, so... That's what it's there for, the visual effect. Let's get this uh, shower in. It bugs me that the kind of feet at the bottom of the shower here at the back don't line up with the top of the trough, so they're always away from the wall like that. Slightly annoying. <laughs> Little things, you know. And we need somewhere for our Collectron, because you can't have a Need my nuke colours. But uh, it's not going to look good on floaty ground there, even if I could get it to place, which it turns out I can't. So we'll nudge our windmill back a little bit. Grab a foundation so that we can have a nice flat surface to drop this thing on. There we go. And we'll line it up at the back here. I could have used another one of the cages, but I thought we'll mix it up, make the thing look a little bit different. There's uh, varieties of spice of life, and kind of gives that ramshackle look a bit more if you mix things up. There we go, put that into place. And we'll put some fences and extra bits and pieces around this, which is going to require shoving that generator out the way a little bit, the windmill. Because I want to put some stairs on the front of here as well. I'll just nudge that back a little bit. There we go. Grab the stairs. It turns out they just fit in the gap there. I was kind of concerned the tree might be getting in the way, but uh, just fits. Let's use the regular old fences here, because I haven't used them in this build yet. There we go. Now, grab our Collectron, just drop that in. Line it up using the line on the floor, so it's straight. There we go. That should do the job. Nice. And we can add some extra bits in the decoration phase in just a moment. So... Onto the tour. Fairly swift build that one. It's uh, quite the ramshackle pile around this particular shipping container, but I do like how it's come out. It's quite fun. There's a few little bits I've done here to kind of make things a bit more interesting. I added extra junk and stuff to make it a bit more three dimensional, bring things out, give that kind of scrappy vibe. There's a little area out front underneath the uh, stairs here. It's just my brewing, chemistry, all that stuff stations, which uh, go quite nicely out here. And a uh, punch machine there as well. I don't want to put too much in here. I could squeeze a few extra bits in. Speaking of, incidentally, we've got probably at least a third of the build budget left on this build. So uh, could squeeze a load more in if I wanted to. But I think there's plenty of decoration here. Decided to put a little sign out front. Because why not? Don't usually have the budget for doing that. But it's kind of fun when I do. A few signs out there for my shop, which is up top. I play a vending. I'll have a little nudge around the back here and just have a quick look at the finished product. I added a few extra bits and pieces here, as I say, just to kind of make it a little bit more busy and interesting to look at. I added a stash box and the Nuka Cola cooler there, which is a fridge that seems to go quite well with a Nuka Cola Collectron. And there we go. Got a whole bunch of brambles and stuff around as well, just to kind of make it look like the, the wildlife's growing back towards the camp and it's been here for a while. Just kind of complete the look. And I've got my shelter just in the right corner here, which you can't quite see because I'm stuck on the rocks. There we go. There it is. A couple extra brambles there as well. So, as soon as we're around here, let's head up the ramp and have a look at the top. I'm quite pleased with how well these kind of snap together as a double set. Normally the stairs don't look great if you double them up like this. This particular ramp does work okay. Nice and rustic looking. Tucked a, uh, the one turret that I've got up here, because you do tend to get enemies spawning out on the on the left there, so it's good to have, uh, at least if nothing else, it'll serve as a warning system to let me know to come out and uh, shoot anybody hassling my camp. So I dropped my power armor station on the top here, because it's not a vast amount of room, but um, just about right for a power armor station up there. A few extra bits of decoration around. With it being a yellow shipping container, I thought we'd uh, use a not yellow power armor station. So I've gone for the responders one, this one, um, which I don't very often change it up. I usually use one of the yellow ones, but I thought the contrast would be a good idea here. So it works quite nicely. Fairly simple, but uh, yeah, it does the job. A couple of extra traps there just by the stairs so that you don't fall off. They, you can see they break when you activate them. They form nice little sort of car railings, I suppose. Which, uh, 
quite good to stop you falling down the gap and get stuck and stuff. So, we will take a little swing around the front here. As I say, I've got uh, oil lamps out here and lanterns and stuff. Same on the inside as well. I avoided using any electric decorations on this one, with the exception of the punch card machine, which always lights up. Just give it that uh, really scrappy vibe. And loads of stuff piled up out front there. I also extended the cages out one by the section on the front, just to try and stop the front edge being so flat. I think it worked quite nicely. As we had a ton of budget left, and it's Mothman Equinox at the moment, I thought I'd put a little Mothman Shrine out front. There's, uh, this camp's really small and compact, and there's loads of room left around it. So, here's my little Mothman Shrine. Loads of brambles and stuff, and a few totems just tucked under the tree there. Such a nice bit of flat ground here. So, we'll put a few bits and pieces down. There's some uh, lanterns in the bushes there, and the fire would probably set the brambles on fire, but uh, we'll ignore that. It looks pretty cool. It actually looks better in the evening, so uh, drop into the stream if you get the chance and you'll be able to see it in the evening, I've no doubt. But uh, I do quite like that. Just coming back around, we've got the Radstag Field Dressing Station from the current scoreboard tucked around there. I've actually just switched over to being a carnivore this week so that I can take advantage of that. It's a bit more useful than being a herbivore is to me at the moment, so that's cool. First time I've made that change in actually years on my character, really. So. Quite happy about that. Cost me a few caps, though. So we'll head up into the little cage here, which, as I say, I've not planted any crops in, because there's not much point if I'm now a carnivore. So we're using it as a crafting room, just because. And yeah, it's a little different. I kind of like that vibe. Lots of bits and pieces of scrap and junk and stuff that have been dragged back have been used. And the cage gives it a kind of nice enclosed feeling that's just, yeah, a little, um, a little different from what we normally see. So I kind of like doing that. Placing things down on this uneven floor was a little bit awkward, but some of the stuff I've been able to kind of work in there kind of hides that fact a little bit, so that's quite cool. Terms of stuff on my shelf here. Gone one click too far down, I think, on that, but uh, as is all too often the case. Still, looks cool. A little bits in the corner. And uh, all my workbenches tucked in quite nicely, spread out around the camp as well with uh, my various crafting areas, which is fun too. Yeah, quite like this. A few more lanterns and um, oil lamp posts as well around, just to give it a little bit of light in the evening. Looks cool. Got a little wabbit. I did think about putting chickens in there, but uh, rapidly decided they made a lot of annoying noise, so I changed them out for the rabbit. That little awning over the door, by the way, is from the Helvetia set, and um, I did that one on myself. Because it's a lot smaller than the one that's, that come with this particular building set, the, um, the abandoned mine shaft. So it worked better for this build. And yeah, they're on the uh, wall decoration tab, and they're quite cool to add over windows and doors and stuff like that if you want something other than the standard. Let's head on inside and have a look at our little living space. Compact, scrappy, and improvised is the order of the day, I think, for this one. Quite happy with the look. Not entirely convinced on where I put the coffee machine there, but. Uh, We'll pretend it's not on fire. Yeah, not very, very improvised, but uh, kind of... I think cosy is probably not quite the right word with the metal walls, but uh, comfortable enough to keep the weather off. A few bits of pieces on display there. And I uh, went for an improvised bed, which I've done a couple of times um, over the years. I don't do it a lot. I kind of prefer to have the clean, tidy beds with proper bedding, usually. But for this particular build, improvised kind of works a little bit. There it goes with the theme a bit more. Yeah. One of the good things to do with um, these shipping containers, if you want to make them look sort of complete, is to go to town on the wall decoration, which is what I've tried to do here, because uh, otherwise they have a very bold, bright, blank-ish surface that can be kind of overbearing, so piling stuff on it looks really quite nice today. Yeah. Put a few rugs down the middle as well, and uh, it looks reasonably homely, I think. And there we go. One uh, ramshackle little... Shipping container camp just down the road from Sutton and Halvesia. So, hope folks enjoyed this one. If you did, please do consider dropping subs and likes. I very, very much appreciate it. Down below the video, as always, social media links, merch store, channel memberships, all that good stuff. If you're interested in supporting the channel that way, please do check all that out. I very, very much appreciate that. It really, really helps out. Massive thank you to everyone who's done that. And if you get a chance, join us for live streams as well. We are, of course, playing Fallout 76, and we are about to start Redfall 2, which I'm really looking forward to. So, if you get a chance to join us for those, but for now, thank you very much for watching, 
and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.